just made you confront yourself over and over and over again, right? <laughs> like you're in your own face or you're in somebody else's face. Yes. Oh my gosh. And so we've been, we've been uh, safer at home, sheltering in place for eight weeks. And uh, some things have really come up for a lot of people, all kinds of different things. So we actually asked this question at the staff meeting or something slightly different. Yeah. But here's the question. Oscar, I'm going to oh, ask you. God. So what have you been really confronted with about yourself in the last eight weeks that you are going to let go of and not take into the next eight weeks of more, you know, still being more at home than out and about? Yeah, this is such a hard question. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is um, still uh, self-doubt. Really? Just constant. Just constant. I mean, it's constant. I just constantly feel like kind of in a saboteur asking the questions of like, really, is this good enough? Are you good enough? So it's been more prevalent because I've um, been at home editing by myself. You can't distract yourself. Yeah, right? I can't distract myself with projects and bookings and shoots. I'm just there with my own stuff and just kind of working through it. So um, I'm going to affirm and know that I'm going to let that go. Yes, let it go. <laughs> this is done. Well, I mean, now I should let it go. But. Yes. I'll take it with you. I know. Oh. I, well, I have to admit, I was surprised. I was really surprised at how much I allowed my own personal fear to come up. I was really surprised about that. Uh -huh. I got I got a little freaked out about, oh my God, am I cleaning my, am I, am I making sure my groceries are clean? Oh. Am I touching things I shouldn't be touching as they come to the door? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really found that I, and so I have to tell you that I, I probably spent up until I was in my mid-20s, my entire life was run by fear um, because of the uh, abusive family that I grew uh. up in, right? So, so I spent a lot of my spiritual 
coin on not being afraid. Yeah. And to have that come up was like, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. And I've really been working on that in the last couple of days. No, this is not how I want to run my life. I'm not going to run the next few months out of that kind of fear. Yes, yeah. I can be thoughtful and careful, but I don't have to be afraid. Wow. And so I'm not taking that in with me. I'm letting it go. I think you just opened something up in me, because what if it's not self-doubt? What if it's the fear that I'm not good enough? What if that, oh my God, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to let it go. Oh my so, gosh, we're going to let it go. Yeah, buckle up, here oh. we go. <laughs> Omi Tutu, Ona Tutu, Ile Tutu, Ori Tutu, Tutu La Roye, Tutu Orisha, Tutu Egumi, Tutu Bobo Egun Ara Arun, Tiena Bless Olo Dumare. Mojuba Olo Dumare, Mojuba Olo Room, Mojuba Olo Fi, Aye, Mojuba Bobo Egun, Mojuba Bobo Orisha, Mojuba Ia Tobimi, Mojuba Baba Tobimi, Mojuba Ia Lorisha, Mojuba Baba Lorisha. Kinka Mashe Yami, Kinka Mashe Baba Me. May our paths and lives always be clear, cool, and calm. May our homes be cool, calm, and sweet. May our ori, our crown, our highest knowest self always be clear, calm, collected, and present. May our roads always be open and obstacles be no more. We salute source, all that is, infinite beingness. We salute the mother who birthed us. We salute the father who birthed us. We salute the spiritual teachers that grow us. We salute the ancestors upon whose shoulders we stand. To the empowered ancestors of light and love and knowing who transitioned on this soil, we salute you, we thank you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and show us the way. To the ancestors of light and love and knowing who transitioned in the horrible Mayafa known as the Middle Passage. We salute you, we thank you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and show us the way. To the ancestors of power and light and love of knowing who transitioned on African soil, we salute you, we thank you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and to show us the way. To the ancestors of light and progress who have transitioned throughout the African diaspora, throughout the, the world. We thank you, we salute you, we bless you, we honor you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and to show us the way. To the empowered ancestors of light and love and progress and expansion, who made a way out of no way, we thank you, we salute you, we bless you, we honor you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and to show us the way. To the ancestors who knew the truth, even when the truth seemed elusive, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and to show us the way. To the ancestors who knew that the reality of freedom, who knew the reality of freedom, even when circumstances would appear otherwise. We thank you, we salute you, we honor you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and show us the way. To the ancestors who have always known our power and who have always stood in the power of who we be, we thank you, we salute you, we honor you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and show us the way. To the ancestors that continue to keep us safe and hold us close, whose names are known and unknown, we thank you, we salute you, we honor you, we bless you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and, and show us the way. Kosi Iku, Kosi Ofo, Kosi Fitibo, Kosi Wahala, Kosi Boburu, Kosi Ashelu, Kosi Edina, Kosi Arun. Funwa I Rei, 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 Funwa I Wa Puele, Funwa Ori Tutu, Funwa Owo Pupu, Funwa Alafia, 
Funwa i re o bin ring, funwa i re o kin ring, funwa i re o mo. Mo du pue o, mo du pue o, mo du pue o. May we experience no limitations. May we know no lack. May we not experience untimely death. May we not experience harm or serious illness. May we know wealth and abundance. May we be blessed with strength, family, and love. May our highest knowing self always be our friend. May we have honor and good character. May we live long and prosper. Mo du pueo, mo du pueo, mo du pueo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ashe, 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 and so it is. Wow, that was libations from Ocean Lottie. Just exquisite. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys, welcome to CSO Dallas. We are a center for spiritual living. Here we are all about being radically inclusive, spiritually progressive, and transforming lives. So whether you are a long-term community member, know that we love you and we miss you. Thank you for being with us this Sunday morning. Or whether you're a new guest, we want you to know that you are here, you are welcomed, you are loved, and I want you to know that here there is no fear, there is no dogma, there is no judgment. You can learn about practical spirituality in a place that's safe and you can just be exactly who you want to be. So, we're going to get started today with this amazing rendition of Let It Go by Lainey Bernstein. Hey, CSL Dallas. I was asked to sing Let It Go from Frozen, so I thought I would record it for you in the safety and comfort of my own home. So I miss you guys and I can't wait to see you and in the meantime, here you go, Let It Go from Frozen. Snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in, heaven knows I tried. Don't let them in, don't let them see Be the good girl you always have to be Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know Well now they know Let it go, let it go Can't hold it back anymore Let it go, let it go Some distance makes everything seem small And the fears that once controlled me Can't get to me at all It's time to see what I can do To test the limits and break through No right, no wrong, no rules for me Thank you. 
let it go. Let it go. It's time to let that shit go. Oh, that wasn't part of the lyrics. But there were some key lyrics in this phenomenal song. It's time to see what you can do, what we can do to test the limits and break through. Let the storm rage on, and it's raging. It's, I'm never going back. The past is in the past. Here I stand in the light of day. Let the storm rage on. So this storm called the pandemic still rages on. It's still raging on in our lives, individually and collectively in so many different ways and so many different perspectives. And yet we are uh, taking a stand that we are creating a new normal. And it's time to create a new normal. We're not going back to the way things are. In some regards, there are some things that aren't normal and never have been normal. And so this is the perfect time right now to create a new normal. And that's our theme for the month. So Ernest Holmes tells us that there is one infinite principle, one infinite thought stuff, one infinite creative power, but countless number of forms which change as the specific idea behind them change. So things change as we change the ideas of them. So it's time to change it up. It's time to perhaps rearrange. It's time to dismantle. It's time to release and let go to the things that aren't working in our lives. Now, right now is the perfect time to identify what isn't working. So I want you to take a moment and, and I'm gonna ask you to reflect during this time that we're still sheltering at home, staying in place as things just are different, um, to take time to know what isn't working what is undesirable, what qualities in your life are undesirable, what thinking patterns perhaps are undesirable or need to be moved around or shifted up or let go, what kind of habits. And once we've determined what they are, after we've taken time to determine what they are, we gotta let that shit go. Now, it's interesting We've got a beautiful, brilliant book of the month, thanks to Dr. Petra Weldis, because she and some other people in the community read it, and it's like, we, this has to be our book of the month. The book of the month is The Not-So-Big Life by Sarah Suzanka. It's a, it's a rich book. I've started reading it myself. She's an architect, and what she does is she helps her clients remodel homes. She doesn't build new ones. She takes what's existing in place and changes it up and makes it better. And this is a brilliant, brilliant book. And so I wanted to share something from chapter three. The chapter is uh, called Identify What Isn't Working. So I highly recommend you get this book. We have some in stock easy, free shipping. So I want you to know as a community, we invite you uh, to order the book from our office manager at CSLDallas.org so that you can get this book right away. But it's a beautiful chapter and she's talking about uh, what isn't working and what isn't working in our lives could be anything. And I bet for all of us, it's very different things. What isn't working in my life is probably not necessarily the same of what's working in your life. Um, and so she actually uses the example in this chapter and talks about this love affair that we can tend to have. This love affair with stuff, you know, stuff. <laughs> One could say that a lot of our economic engine as of late has been focused on stuff accumulating stuff, acquiring stuff, having stuff. And 
And um, Sarah, she says in the book, in this chapter, she says the sad reality is that no amount of stuff can fill the void created by our own absence. Stuff is no substitute for experiencing who and what we really are. Ugh. Okay, this is really good. I wanna share some of it with you. She says, when we own stuff, we have to maintain it. We also have to earn enough money to procure it, house it, protect it, keep it clean, and insure it against theft or loss. So every purchase has strings attached. It will require a long-term commitment from you if you become its owner. And that, in turn, will keep you a little busier than you would otherwise have been. The extra busyness also makes it a little more challenging to show up in the rest of your life, to be truly present in whatever it is you are doing. Although when considered individually, each purchase seems fairly innocuous in its time requirements. Taken collectively, the impact of all that stuff can be enormous. One new suit or sweater takes up minimal closet space, for example, but 30 new items of clothing, clothing may force a closet remodeling. That remodeling takes time, energy, and money, all of which can, if you're not paying attention, keep you from doing the things that have real meaning for you. Okay. She's hitting the nail on the head, at least for me, as I've been reflecting on this, and I'm gonna suspect she could for you. So thoughts, she's talking about stuff, but let's talk about some other stuff. Thoughts, things, situations, circumstances, they can all get in the way if we're not paying attention. We've got to stay vigilant and pay conscious attention to what's going on in our own lives. And we've got to be vigilant and pay conscious attention on what's going on in the lives of those around us. Or the things that matter to us will lose their meaning to us. Or perhaps we could lose them altogether. This is what this unprecedented moment in time is showing each of us. I think, I gather. It's showing us that we consciously create things, situations and circumstances. And some of these things are good. We know how to do that. This is what we teach here, that we can consciously create things that are good. Good for our own lives individually and collectively. And the same thing can happen when I go unconscious. I still create things. And some of those things when I go unconscious aren't so good. I've got to stay vigilant and be conscious of what is the stuff that's taking place and going on in my life as it relates to my thoughts, my habits, my patterns, my words, my actions. And this is what I know that each of us that are connected to this beloved community, CSL Dallas, we're, we're pretty vigilant and, and we stay conscious. And that's what I love about us. And we, no matter what, can't go to sleep with the stuff that's going on in our lives. So the good news is, is for most of us, in this unprecedented time, sort of like me sitting here today, we've had time to slow down. We've had some time to slow down and start thinking about this stuff and examining it. I've talked to so many people and so has Petra and our, our licensed spiritual coaches and our leadership. We, we're, we're staying in touch and, and um, 
many people are saying that this is a time where we're going inward. Each of us are going inward. I, I, I love hearing that people are actually uh, increasing their spiritual practice, their meditation, their journaling, uh, their, their spiritual mind treatments, affirmative prayer. And that's really important. Because this is the time right now as we create a new normal. It's a time for us to get clear on what's important to us. And when we do, and when we get clear on what's not working, we've got to let that go. And we've got to let it go so that we can, like a remodel in a house, create space for something new. So when we know what's not working, so the first task for us right now is to examine what's not working in our own lives. Those thoughts, those patterns, those things that really don't work, that take us away from what matters most, what's most meaningful in our lives and what we value. And once we know what that is, we've got to let them go. How do we do that, you might ask? I know you'd be asking me this if you were here right now. Ernest Holmes tells us in How to Change Your Life. It's also in the original form, Basic Ideas. So we're going basic here, Basic Ideas of the Science of Mind. He tells us this is how to do it. He says, give the universal law new instructions. Remember that one very important thing about mind, God, spirit, in its action as universal law is obedience. It creates without question. It responds to your firm convictions and beliefs. This should settle any question about how to clean out our unwanted thoughts because now you know that your thoughts of good acting as a command and a directive, clean out from that storehouse everything negative and detrimental to your well-being. So this is how we do it. And I have to say that this is not how I do it all the time. And I'm, I'm trusting I'm more vigilant with this. I tend to spend too much time on those unwanted thoughts. I give them a lot of attention. I spend a lot of time on those things that don't serve me, that aren't for my good. And he tells us that we can clean them out, these unwanted things that we need to let go of, by replacing them with thoughts of good. And it is commanded and we direct it and that cleans out the storehouse of everything negative and detrimental to our well-being. So we've got to let go of the undesirable qualities. We've got to let go of the thinking patterns. We've got to let go of these habits. This shit has got to go. And we've got to replace them with thoughts of good. That which we know to be true, that which we know to be real, that which we know to be of the power in the presence of love. Ernest Holmes tells us, that which thought has done, thought can undo. Lifelong habits of wrong thinking can be consciously and deliberately neutralized and an entirely new order of mental and emotional reaction established in mind merely to abstain from wrong thinking is not enough. There must be active right thinking. We have to be vigilant. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. 
But I gotta say, if you're anything like me, because I'm a funny bunny, our human, human thinking mind grabs on to things and it will, and it does, play tricks with us. Like making us think that more stuff will make us happy. That like many things, it's a hollow dream. Stuff is a hollow dream. So I want to go back to this book one more time in this chapter, this rich chapter. Sarah Suzanka has this to say. After talking about this stuff, she says, what we are really looking for is a sense of the real and an experience of true significance, true meaning. That can come only from one source. Deep down inside, every human being hears the echo of the experience of unity and wants it back. So we live our whole lives with only a vague sense of what it is we want, but with the absolute knowledge that we had it once and it's possible to have it again if we only knew how. That is why falling in love is so powerful and why so many fairy tales speak so deeply to us, whether we're three or 93. These stories encapsulate our longing for reunion with lost love. By falling in love, we lose our boundaries and our limited sense of self. For the period when we are intoxicated with love, we expand that sense of self to include the glorious other. And in this process, everything else in our world becomes radiant as well. It's the closest experience most of us have to unity. And it's immensely freeing when it happens. It is also quite uncomfortable. And so, to our logical thinking mind, not a practical way to live. In fact, the thinking mind sees the heart as dangerous, precisely because it moves to its own drummer and dances a completely uninhibited dance. So the thinking mind has been hard at work manufacturing counterfeit love objects that are unlikely to upset the apple cart, but are still able to satisfy, at least temporarily, the yearning for union. Stuff can be desired, worked for, and won over without all the messy side effects of true love. Our love affair with stuff is a surrogate concocted by our heads to obscure the real longings of our hearts. But all of these inanimate objects of our desires are incapable of offering us the direct experience of greater vitality that the true love can offer. They can't really feed our spirits. Our hearts experience the love they long for only when the boundaries that so rigidly define the sense of me from you, self from other are eroded. So it's time, it's time to think about the stuff that doesn't work in our lives anymore. It's time to take time to get clear on what that is. Like I said, what's not working in my life is probably different from what's not working in yours. But there are some things that collectively, what's not working, I bet the vast majority of us 
because we're one and we are connected and we all have that longing to be with and as source. We have that longing. It's within us. We remember it. There has been a time throughout eternity where it's been present for humanity. And there are some things that I know, I know we would agree upon in the vast majority. And that's all we need in our collective consciousness. And some of those things, when we identify them on our individual life, it's time to let that shit go. And on the collective life, it's really time to let that shit go. So I'm asking us collectively, every single person that is watching this to lock arms, lock hearts, lock minds and be vigilant. And right now, right now, take a stand for the good that we want and to focus on that good and take a stand for that good. Because this community, CSL Dallas, the Center for Spiritual Living, we decided to make this year of all years, our annual theme, 2020, tip the scales. And it's time to tip the scales in some of this stuff and let that shit go to test the limits of what we can do collectively and break through. And I know you and your heart, that longing that she says that we long for only when the boundaries that so rigidly define that sense of me from you, self from other are eroded. That's the longing I'm talking about that we tip these scales because the storm still rages. And there are some examples right now against Asian Americans, Latinos, Native Americans, and African Americans. And recently, this has been exemplified with African Americans through the three recent murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Dreshawn Reed, and Brianna Taylor. This is one of the most significant things we have to collectively let go of. So we're going to end with something that we did here as a community in October of 2018, when yet again there was Botham John and our community and the ministers from Centers for Spiritual Living who were in town because of our ministers gathering at our community here at CSL Dallas. We got into a big large bus and we went down to City Hall and we took a stand to heal the consciousness of racism. And we're ending with Dr. Petra and what she shared on that day. It's time to let this shit go. And so it is. Centers for Spiritual Living in CSL Dallas are invoking the power of prayer and meditation along with spiritually grounded moral call to our political and faith leaders dedicated to healing the consciousness of racism in America. Spiritual leaders throughout the ages have discovered their moral obligation to call forth a new vision for humanity based in the spiritual teachings of the world's greatest scriptures. In our Judeo-Christian culture, this began with the Hebrew prophets reminding the kings of Israel that without a moral compass and a spiritual grounding, the state will fail. These prophets sought to revolutionize the people and to awaken humanity to a moral compass of law and faith. Jesus carried the message to the priests and the people, preaching a revolutionary gospel of love, not only a love of the divine, but also a love for neighbor and self. 
He too exhorted the leaders and the people to find common ground with those unlike themselves, both Gentile and Jew, Hebrew and Greek, for the good of the individual as well as the state. He sought to revolutionize spirituality and awaken humanity to an inner compass of love. Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses on the door of Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany, citing the sale of indulgences as the prime example of the corruption of the church. Sparking the Protestant Reformation, he revolutionized Christianity by urging the people to learn the spiritual teachings themselves so as not to be held hostage or beguiled by the wealth and power of the church. He sought to revolutionize where power and authority live in spirituality and to awaken humanity to our own ability to discern our inner compass of truth. Our American Revolution and our founding documents continued this revolution of awakening humanity to the possibilities and potential for each life in the context of civil society by creating a nation based on the premise that all men are created equal and endowed with the inalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These men were prophets of a new idea, revolu revolutionizing government, awakening humanity to the worth of each individual, and creating a compass that has led us toward greater and greater human rights. Of course, we know that, the t that at the time that only meant male property owners who were primarily white. Slaves, actually black men, were cr counted as three-fifths of a person and no woman counted at all. But the die was cast and the revolution continued. People sought to understand their, un, to expand their understanding of the prophecy that all men are created equal and to find the moral and spiritual fiber to claim it for themselves and for each other. So came the abolitionists, the women suffragists, the civil rights movements, the ADA, gay pride, and the dreamers. Over the course of time, all men has been stretched to encompass and understood to include all. This broadening was the result of good, decent, spiritually grounded people and motivated people engaging in self-examination and performing a profound moral inventory on themselves and on our country. Examining the results of this prophetic history and ongoing revolution. Every person made in the image and likeness of the divine creator imbued with inalienable rights is in fact included in all men. Except they aren't, not in practice. Not in the persistent ways that our culture holds on to beliefs about groups of people, especially black people, especially black men. Once again, it becomes the moral obligation of prophets like Martin Luther King Jr. to awaken humanity to those that were kept out of the revolution those who were not included in the equality of all human beings. Martin Luther King Jr. sought once again to broaden the revolution to the blacks and African Americans in our nation by awakening us to our moral compass of inclusion, respect, and the dignity of every life. And yet the last few years has shown us that this revolution is not over. What creates this, what creates this pernicious undercurrent of racism, even fear of black people, especially of black men? It is because there are still underlying beliefs held in the psyche of America that causes us to fear a powerful black man and despise a strong black woman. The grandeur of America is its open arms and our outrageous belief in the possibility and potential of, our, of every single human being. When some cannot come to the banquet and others are murdered at the feast, there is a cancer eating away at the heart of America, tainting its very soul. This cancer is the, is the unconsciously held beliefs about blacks, which are at odds with our spoken values of the rights of, and dignities of humanity. So there is an underbelly in the consciousness of America, just as we subconsciously cling to the beliefs that are wrong, outdated, and dangerous. So parts of the America psyche is holding on to old fears generated lifetimes ago in the ships and markets and fields of slaves. <sighs> 
Can we imagine proud warriors ripped from their tribes and strong matriarchs torn from their families, arriving in the Americas half starved, but with an insatiable anger and a burning desire for freedom? Can we imagine slave owners with a shattered moral and spiritual compass becoming fearful of these powerful warriors and strong women? Fear creates anger and the need to suppress, which only invites more resistance. Thus violence begets violence until death or de defeat is the result. Yet the stories starred these men are angry and strong. That the stories stated, the, that let me read it again, I'm so sorry. Yet the stories stated, these men are angry and strong, be afraid, don't let them lift their heads for a second. And these women, they won't listen, they are too full of themselves to do what they are told, break them down, don't let them lift their heads for a second. And more death and defeat is the result. Now what happens over time is individual stories pass into generic stories. They be, these become legends, the legends become myth, and the myths fade from the conscious mind. But the lingering odor of these stories merge into the fabric of the psyche as underlying beliefs, assumptions, and perspectives about life that are at odds with the values of an awakened humanity and the moral compass provided by this ongoing revolution that we are engaged in. This is the consciousness that cries out for healing. This is the consciousness that perpetuates racism, the murdering of black women and men without justice or change. Simone Weil, the great French philosopher and the only 20th century Catholic saint, writes, how then shall we define injustice? Injustice is this cry of a soul being hurt. The soul of our black brothers and sisters and the soul of America is being hurt by the injustice of racism. This racism is so plainly against the values of America and the moral compass of spirituality that is crying out to be healed. A prophetic voice is called for, or the state will fail and the people shall perish. So we, faith leaders and members of Centers for Spiritual Living, we lift our prophetic voices together with all faith leaders of every tradition, and we call for a healing of these unconscious beliefs, subconscious fears, and sometimes outright lies. We seek to bring this consciousness to the surface to be healed. Centers for Spiritual Living believes in the unity of all life and the oneness of humanity. We believe that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe that all people are the divine spark and to have a divine right to express their best self. We value the compassionate heart, the disciplined mind, and the creative power inherent in every human being. Standing on the shoulders of the spiritual, spiritual prophets before us, we are here to awaken humanity to its magnificence. We exhort our leaders, both faith and political, to answer the call of love, compassion, unity, integrity, decency, and equity. As spiritual leaders and people of faith, we know and believe in the power of the word of prayer and the healing intention in group meditation. So today, we gather to speak our word for the continuation of the revolution of humanity. We speak our word for the evolution of our culture into its truest and highest potential, seeing each and every person as a valued, important member of the whole. We speak our word for the healing of the old, old beliefs, old wounds, old unforgivenesses, old fear, old resentment, old hatred, and old separation. These have no place in our hearts, for they cloud our spiritual and moral compass. We speak our word for the restoration of the grand experiment, the revolutionary ideas, love your neighbor as yourself. All people are created equal. All people are part of one human family. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand But you are discouraged to run just to make it through another day. 
Gotta let it go Gotta let it all go Are you listening? Yeah. You got to, got to, got to let it all is what you have to say I release and I let go let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God no, no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am Yes, I'm only here for God. No, 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 no more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Oh, I release. And I let, I let go. Let the spirit run my life. And my That's my favorite rendition of that song. Oh, so I, I, good. Know, I love that. So we are releasing all the old stuff and we are not taking it with us because we are about the world that works and the lives that work for each one of us. And so we are so grateful for all the ways that you are supporting CSL Dallas right now. We love being with you online. We love all the ways in which we're engaging and interacting with you. And we love all the ways in which you're supporting us. So please do continue to do so. You can uh, click on the Facebook uh, donation button. There is a text phone number um, that you're seeing down in the chat right now. You can text that one time setup, or you can go to CSLDallas.org and click donate now. And we are so grateful that you are uh, feeling served and fed by us because yes. we sure love being here with you. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Now, if you've taken foundations, you guys, there's a new class coming called Self Mastery. Starts on Tuesday with our very own Tracy Brown. So what is the class about? So self mastery, whether it be your finances or your relationships or family or your job, you get to master them with spiritual principles. You get to let go of all the fear and the unknowns and the confusion, let all of that go and learn to actually self master your life with Tracy Brown. No one is better to teach that course than Tracy Brown, so please check it out, starting on Tuesday. Okay, and if you haven't taken foundations or you're not into maybe signing up for a big class, on Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday night, Karen at her Consciously Seeking Spirituality, um, it, we, we, she's gonna redo Reverend Andriette Earl because the, the tape just didn't work last mm -hmm. week. She's, it's an amazing interview. You are not going to wanna miss it. It's really extraordinary. And then the following Tuesday, she's gonna be talking to Don Miguel Ruiz <gasps> Jr. So you're yes. not gonna wanna miss that either. Awesome! Okay, so that's Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, you guys, Wednesday night, here it is, Meditation and Metaphysics with Tracy Brown again! Yay. It's gonna be awesome! So yes. that's gonna be on Wednesday nights on Facebook Live or Zoom, so just check it out. It's gonna be amazing. So we have a new offering um, on May 23rd, Saturday, May 23rd, and it says, read from my iPad. <laughs> 
so let me read from my iPad. This is a really extraordinary. This is uh, this is going to be amazing. So this is um, Angel Carlton. She's going to do a, a, an introductory Saturday called Dedicated to Destiny, a course in transformation. She's doing an introduction May 23rd at 10, 1030. It's an hour and a half, 90 minute introduction on the six stages of transformation. She's going to whet your appetite, give you just a little bit to start using this because she's going to set up for a six-week class J July and August dedicated to destiny, your destiny, a course in transformation. It's a suggested love offering of 20 bucks. You cannot go wrong. This is going to be really an extraordinary experience. Wow. Um, so May 23rd, put it on your calendar, register csldallas.org. Awesome. And you guys, all of this information and more can be found on Facebook, on our Facebook page and also on our website, csldallas.org. So just check it out. Any questions, you got us right there. Perfect. Yeah. Now, so we're going to have a closing song and then um, we go right into the Q&A, okay. an opportunity to talk with Reverend Kieran after um, uh, her talk and an opportunity to talk back, comment, share, ask questions. If you are in need of spiritual coaching, a little bit of spiritual mind treatment, affirmative prayer, the practitioners are waiting for you in their Zoom room. Now you go into their Zoom room and then they put you in a private breakout yep. with a practitioner where you can get prayer just like we do normally after service on a Sunday morning exactly the same way. So please do take advantage of it. They are standing by. They're standing by right now after the song or in 30 minutes they'll still be there um, after the Q&A is over. So um, here we go. Um, our last song, an opportunity to celebrate out our service, and we'll see you again Please online. You One big family! Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded.
Marilyn Floyd. Thank you.